Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we are going to look at the latest release of Jupyter Lab. Especially, we are going to focus on the debugger aspect of it. So, sometime back, Jupyter Notebook announced, Jupyter Lab announced that uh, they are going to support a debugger. So, why do we need debugger in the first place? So, if you remember, there is a talk uh, from Joel Gruss um, about why Jupyter Notebook, for that matter, is a very bad tool for uh, software development. So he was talking particularly about um, software development aspect of data science. Maybe you are developing tools uh, or uh, uh, something where you actually, you know, write software um, like a code in a software development uh, environment than, you know, using it only for data visualization or model building. So that has been a very popular talk. And then um, the, the, many people have tried to give you tools that can help you avoid the problems that he had mentioned. One of the important such tools is uh, debugger. So if you are familiar with software development process, one of the things that you would uh, probably have to do uh, multi at multiple instances is that you have to debug your code. So if you have to debug your code on um, the easiest way, probably there are a lot of internet memes available for that, which is to use a print statement. So at every place where you want to debug the tool, so you, uh, sorry, debug the code, you would probably put a print statement and then try to understand what is, what is the state uh, in, at that particular point and then you would try to understand what is the output of it and then based on that you will try to debug the code. Even though print statement uh, still works, but the efficient way is to use a debugger and uh, if you see uh, every popular IDE would come with a debugger inbuilt. Uh, it could be VS Code, PyCharm, Atom, all these codes have uh, a debugger installed um, by default and then a lot of software developers uh, actively use that um, to debug their code. So this is a thing that was missing um, in Jupyter Notebook, uh, sorry, Jupyter Lab also. So uh, now is the time for us to enjoy that benefit. So in this video, we're going to see how you can uh, install the latest version of Jupyter Lab and then how you can have uh, the debugger up and running. Um, that's what we're going to see. So let's quickly get started. Uh, so first of all, uh, again, just to add, there are a lot other more enhancements as part of this Jupyter Lab release, but we are going to only focus on the Jupyter Labs uh, debugger tool. So uh, first, first, what we need is we need to install the latest version of Jupyter Lab. So you have to say pip3 in my case, um, in your case, it could be different pip3 uh, install, sorry, Jupyter Lab uh, equal to equal to three. So you're making sure that you are installing the latest third version. So it says that uh, for a couple of things, the um, uh, package is already available. So that is done. So once that is done, there is one more small thing that you have to make sure that uh, for you to use a debugger, you need a separate Python kernel. You are not going to use the same kernel that um, uh, that that you are using uh, by default. So you need a kernel that supports debugging. So uh, uh, Zuis, I think that's how we should read. Uh, probably a Greek name, I'm not sure. So Zuis Python is a kernel, Jupyter kernel um, for Python that supports um, debugging. So we need to install Zuis Python. So to install Zuis Python, so what we're going to do is pip3 install Zuis, sorry, Python notebook. We are going to install this and uh, this is also installed. So we have installed the two packages that are required for us to perform this task, uh, which is debugging a code on Jupyter environment. So first we installed Jupyter lab. Second, we installed that kernel, which we are going to use to debug this Python code. Uh, so once that is done, we can call our Jupyter lab. So now I've called the Jupyter lab. So Jupyter lab is loading on my machine. So I'm going to take it and then paste it here and then make it big. Oh, it wants my token. So let me give the token that it wants. Or I can probably simply open the entire URL, which is much more easier for me to do. So at this point, I'm uh, I'm loading the tool. So uh, you can see uh, that uh, I have I have loaded the tool. So I don't want to show you everything that is on my computer. So so you can see that there is a tool. So I'm going to close it. Um, I have already installed that, so I don't want to show that at this point. So you can see uh, once I ins uh, once I open this. So the first thing that you have to make sure is um, even if it is already there, it is well and fine. If it is not there, go to extensions, extensions here, and uh, search for debugger. If it's already there, it's good. If it is not there, go to uh, extension and search for debugger and click install. 
So once you click install, uh, you know that at this point you have the debugger installed. So after you have debugger installed, uh, first let us try with um, with a normal uh, Python code. So let's go. I have just created a new um, Python code. I'm going to uh, create a simple function. So in this case, um, uh, I'm going to create a function for addition. I'm, I'm just basically using their example x, y and uh, I'm going to store it in a result x plus y and I'm going to return their result. I think I have to probably zoom it in to make it easier. Yeah, uh, I have to. Yeah, so return result. This is my function and then after this function, I have to call this. I'm going to call this saying result equal to add uh, 3 comma 4 comma 5 and then result plus equal to 1 and uh, result is what I'm going to print. So at this point, it prints 10. So when I click Jupyter uh, uh, notebook, uh, now it, it opens this. But you can see even when the debugger is active, you cannot set breakpoints. So breakpoints is where you want uh, uh, breakpoint is as the name suggests you want your code to stop uh, executing there so that um, you can uh, it's like your pause button uh, while the code is getting executed so you want to set those points so you cannot set those points with the default kernel that you are using for python so you need to have a kernel that supports debugging so i'm not sure whether these kernels would ever su uh, um, support uh, debugging uh, but for us we have to change the kernel. Uh, so I'm going to go to the XPython that we installed. If you remember the, the other package that we installed. Once I installed XPython, uh, so select that kernel. So let me close this. You can see there is a button here that is to enable or disable debugger. So at this point, we can click this and then enable the debugger. So we have successfully enabled the debugger. After you enable the debugger, if you go here, you can actually see that it gives you option to set the breakpoints. So let me show you quickly one more time. So if you are using the default Python or anything that you installed, you will not be able to set that. Um, you will not be able to set the breakpoint. So you need X, X, uh, Python kernel that we just in, installed at the top start. So once you have that, you have to enable the debugger. Once you enable the debugger, you will be able to set the breakpoint. So I'm going to set the breakpoint here and uh, probably here. And then maybe like here, let's set three breakpoints. So now you can see that there is, uh, we have successfully set up three breakpoints. So that's what it is showing that there are three breakpoints. So for you to see, uh, it, it also shows you whether you want the variable or not. So uh, let me show run once without the variable, then I can show you with the variable. So select this, run it. Once you run it, um, you can see that uh, it is it, uh, it is showing that module one uh, this is the location uh, where you have the breakpoint so if you click this you can see uh, the place uh, you know all these things so the first thing is uh, it is showing what are all the variables that you have got uh, special variables but function is also within this current uh, session environment so that is there so next you can run this like this you can click next so at this point um, your value of x is 4 and value of y is 5 and uh, then when you click next it is saying the result there is a new variable the result is 9 so uh, return result is 9 and then when you run this and then it is stopping in the next breakpoint which is uh, you, you are actually incrementing it so when you run this so the result has become 10 and then when you run this your uh, debugging process is successfully completed so let's let's have a quick look at what happens when you run it uh, with uh, it. so it, it gives you like this uh, with when the variable is um, enabled so you, you what you see is you have an integer uh, currently in the current session you already have an integer so that's what it is showing that because when we ran it first uh, we have this integer so if you want you can probably like re re restart the kernel uh, and uh, clear all the outputs and then you can run it but I'm not going to do that so we can just see so you have a result variable which already says 10 uh, and you have uh, all the functions so let's just for for time being ignore that and then um, once you run it uh, so it shows a uh, module one uh, line number one and then when you run this sorry I should have clicked next yep and uh, run next uh, so you have initial variables four and five and then run next uh, gives you nine uh, as a result x four five and then uh, at this point uh, you are going into the result uh, it's returning the result 
after you return the result now you have the plus uh, one which is a increment so uh, now nine plus one next result is 10 so you are showing the result so it is done so if you want to further probably you know try this uh, the best way to do it is uh, to put it in a for loop for um, i in um, range of uh, 0 to 10 instead of uh, first value I'm going to give like this so let's try to run this once again uh, so you can see that uh, the function is getting executed uh, okay let me just run this as well and now you can see uh, the function was created now if you see uh, the first stage your uh, variables uh, the this is the first stage so if you run this you can see that um, x value is 0 and 5 and then 5 it just it just keeps on changing 1 now 2 now it, it just you can see what is happening with that so every time the loop is running so this is uh, this is really helpful so like i said uh, at the start of the video developers probably would uh, probably what, what what would we do so you'd probably say print result here so we'd probably say print result here so like we would have a bunch of print statements uh, i'm not saying that it doesn't work but uh, um, i mean still it's a good um, practice for us to have a, a proper debugger like if you if you know to use a debugger it's it's really a handy thing for you to have so it's definitely a good thing so you should definitely try to use debuggers and that makes your software development process or even if you are simply writing code for a, a data visualization data manipulation machine learning so knowing basic software development principles like uh, debugging unit testing so all these things will uh, pay good dividends um, when when the time is right so that's that's basically about uh, the uh, uh, latest debugger so it's not entirely latest so this was available earlier uh, but now it is it has been shipped um, as part of uh, the Jupyter Lab, the latest to Jupyter Lab 3.0. So, like we discussed initially, uh, a quick re recap of what we did. So, we initial the we installed the latest version, which is version three of Jupyter Lab. After we did that, we needed a kernel that supports uh, debugging. Uh, so, we installed a Python kernel that supports debugging, which is Zoe's kern, uh, Python. After we installed that, then we invoked, we launched our Jupyter Lab, and then we tried to make sure that uh, we have the extension for Jupyter uh, uh, debugger. So just go there, search for a, a debugger. If it is already available, you're good. If it's not, just click install, uh, that would install it. Once you install that thing, uh, you would probably see the debugger here. Even if you do not see that, it doesn't matter really. So you have to select, cr create a new kernel, um, sorry, notebook, uh, click the kernel, and then select the ideal kernel uh, in your case, which is in our case which is this uh, for python if you are using it for a different language okay. so once you do that uh, then uh, you write your code uh, enable the debugger then you will be able to set the breakpoints set the breakpoints run the code debug your code and uh, that should uh, be really good for your software development uh, process and then um, unlike joel Gruss said uh, now jupyter lab is really great extension of jupyter notebook and then that will give you the best of the both worlds so you have a notebook inside a, an id and uh, if you want to use a uh, notebook uh, uh, with vs code so i've got a separate video for that i'll link that video if you want to check that out but jupyter lab is an amazing um, id kind of id on your browser and the other good thing uh, probably very quick highlight is um, the, the thing that i liked is really uh, how um, easy and uh, very responsive it is for mobile environment so if you if i were to go to my settings uh, sorry developer tools and then uh, if i were to say that um, I'm, I'm i'm using this uh, on a mobile environment uh, so you you can uh, see how the jupyter notebook is sorry uh, my apologies i have to select this and then go developer tools and then click so you can see how responsive it has become which also means uh, that using it on mobile is going to be really awesome so if you like probably have got an, an ipad or something like that so um, this is this is really very responsive and uh, it does a great job of ipad pro it does a great job of uh, being responsive so uh, it's a good tool it's a really nice tool and um, i hope uh, you all enjoy the latest release of jupyter lab and if you really like it uh, give you a shout out to the amazing team that um, develops this tool as part of their open source initiative and uh, show your support to them and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends if you have not subscribed please subscribe and uh, until next video stay safe peace